Hello Sagittarius, welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Sagittarius is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your tarot card reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment. Consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. It is totally free. It doesn't cost anything. All right. If there's something you would like me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger. And I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Sagittarius, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And, well, a four of swords, that is, um, that's good. It means we're listening, right? It means we've, uh, we've got our ears on, as they say. And I think that really this is, um, it's kind of uh, calling a truce with our own mind, you know. I think there's something that we've been really worried about, and it's, it feels like we're kind of letting it go. Not letting it go like we don't care about it. Letting it go as far as the stress and the confusion and the, um, the kind of internal debate that we experience, right? I feel like we're letting that go a little bit, that we're choosing to be a little bit more open, free, right? And, and trying to listen more to what spirit is telling us. Now, I wanna put this into some context. Um, uh, we've got a lot of change going on. Two of Pentacles, Knight of Pentacles, very good energy. We're, we're looking at the future. We know that things are changing. Things are in flux for us, but we're very hopeful about the future because we can see it, right? There's the five, okay, now we're getting somewhere. See, we got a five to a four. So to me, it's a lot of this kind of frustration, confusion, chaos, even maybe some anger, right? But it's stabilizing and it's becoming that four of swords where we're just we're breathing, right? This is the card that says breathe. And then we can decide how we're going to react to the situation. Yeah, we've got a Prince of Cups, that is the effort to live authentically, to materialize our dreams, right? And so I think what could be here uh, going on is that there's been kind of a change of your plans. There's been a change in your dream, right? And we've had some indication of this in the last couple of readings. Now we got more fire, right? But it's different fire than the Five of Wands. This is the Queen of Wands. So there's a connection there with the water energy. So it's kind of like um, it's... Uh, it's a renewed fire. It's a renewed passion and confidence. Now we've got that nine of wands and the prince of wands and a queen of swords, which I think is okay, uh, and a two of wands. So this is really good. We've got fire to earth with the two, right? I always love it when we get two of, of the same number cards and they happen to be in the suit of, of wands and pentacles, right? Because I feel like this is now us um, with the fire and the earth. I feel like it's now us accepting the reality of the situation and saying, okay, situation is changing, right? Things are not what they used to be, and that's okay. Um, what I'm going to do is take control of this situation as much as possible. I know we can't control everything, right? But we're taking charge of, of what's going on in our lives right now. And instead of being a passive witness, now we're being two of wands. We are being the active participant in things, okay? So I think things have been a little bit chaotic in your life. There's been some disruption, right? And if you couldn't tell, there's been some disruption in my life as well. You can see the studio here is a little bit sparse. Um, we moved into a new location, my wife and I, and this is, this is the new studio. It looks very similar to the old studio. Thank my wife for that. Um, we're, we've made a few changes. We've basically upgraded some of the things that, we've, that we're using. You know, like I got a new table and a, obviously a new chair, which is pretty fancy, um, considering it doesn't squeak like my old chair did, which I still have um, in the corner there. So uh, some nostalgia. 
but things have changed and um, it really is in my life anyway it was trying to figure out how to make this work it's a new environment it's um, you know you'd think that you'd be able to just pick up and move things somewhere else and have them work exactly the same way right but it doesn't work like that there's anomalies there's something different about this space uh, there's something different about just the energy and the angles in the room. And so the cameras needed a lot of adjusting. The, the height of everything needed a lot of adjusting. The, just the, the overhead camera needed a lot of adjusting. And I think I got it to where it's okay. Um, but that's kind of what the, what the five of, of wands into a four of swords is kind of talking about. It's saying, okay, these are my new circumstances. How am I going to take control and make them work for me the best that they can. Okay, it's not gonna be perfect, we know that, but we don't have that kind of confusion and we don't have really with the, fi with the, with the fives, I'm thankful we didn't get a five of swords because that's kind of a, a defeatist attitude. It's kind of saying, well, things didn't work out my way and now I'm just gonna give up. Well, we're not giving up. We're quieting down our mind, we're breathing, we're trying to get centered, you know, and we're taking charge, we're thinking, okay, how can I roll with the punches here? Yeah, well, first off, let's, uh, let's select the mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. This is a random card from the Smith Wake Tarot. This is that factor, infinite and unknown. And we are just going to set it down right over here. Now, because this is a new location, we didn't set up a guardian of the mystery card. So I think we're going to default to, I think, I think Alien was the very first... I think this was the very first guardian of the mystery card that we ever had, so we might as well go back to our, our beginnings, right? Our humble origins. And we're gonna put Alien Simon Mork Ripley, or ASMR for short, right there on top of that mystery card. And we're not gonna look at that card until the very end, okay? Um, but it will tie everything together. It will give us the confirmation that we need at the end of the reading. And if at any point during this program you feel like you know what that card is, I want you to put your prediction down in the comments below. Um, we can do it together as a group exercise, right? I think it's important, I think it's useful, and it's kind of fun, right? Okay, let's take a look around the room because what I'm noticing right away is that we don't have any major arcana energy, right? So there's probably part of you, um, some aspect of your, your mind right now that is thinking, spirit has just abandoned me, right? But I don't feel like that's it at all. I think what Spirit is doing is saying, you got this, you don't need my help, right? That, you know, Spirit is here as the, as the table. Spirit is the foundation, you know, of the whole thing. Um, and Spirit is um, working through you. But there's no direct communication. There's no card here from the, the, the major arcana group, right? That will give us something to focus on in terms of that spiritual energy. So it's kind of like, you got this. You don't need any particular emphasis on anything, right? But one thing I like to do when we're when we run into this issue of there being literally no major arcana, let's just double check. Yeah, we've got actually we've got a lot of court cards more than anything, okay? And it's a lot of fire. Um, it's a lot of fire, and it's uh, you know a good, a good mix of air and earth and and some water, but mostly fire. Right, mostly fire here. So it really is a creative thing. It's something you're very ambitious for. But when we run into a situation where there are no major arcana energies, I like to do a little hexagram from the I Ching. Okay? And this is to ask for a message from spirit. You know, to ask for there to be something on the table um, to emphasize. You know, rather than spirit saying, well, you got this. You don't really need any help. There's really no major issues right now. But maybe we're asking for a piece of advice, right? We're asking for a little bit of guidance. So let's see what our hexagram is. I know this is not the traditional way of casting a hexagram, but I'm going to do it anyway. Let's see. Oh, that I think that's the one. Maybe these are the two. These two wanted to come out. And stilling and biting through. I think, I think that's important. First the stilling, right? Because the stilling, what I immediately, right? It's, it's a four of, of swords. We're stilling the mind. We are stilling the, um, we're stilling the confusion, right? We are not 
let's put this one over here for now. We're stilling the, uh, the worry, the frustration, the anger. We're stilling the mind and the emotions at the same time. We can't separate the two. Okay, so when we talk about the mind, you have to also include how you feel about stuff. And when we're talking about the emotions, you kind of have to include how you think about stuff, right? But this one is 52, stilling. It's almost a stoicism, right? It's, it's, uh, it's mountain over mountain. It's like we see the big mountain outside of us, that big obstacle, and we feel equal to it. We're up to the challenge. We're equal to this, you know, to this problem. Stilling your back, not grasping yourself, moving in your rooms, not seeing your people, not a mistake. Okay, we got uh, kind of eyes on the prize here, right? We're looking at that huge mountain before us and we're kind of growing in stature to meet it eye to eye, you know? Um, I like this very much. Hold yourself still as in meditation. Don't seek to grasp yourself by hunting down your every thought. You do not need to resonate with anyone. Even if you feel as though you ought to be sensitive to their presence and needs, it is no mistake to exclude all these things and be quiet within yourself. What if there were nothing you had to do now? What if there were nowhere else you had to be? I think this is really hitting on something because all the major, um, the absence of the major arcana, but all the, the presence of all these court cards. So I wonder if some of these court cards really are other people that are making demands on you right now. And spirit by way of the I Ching is saying, you don't need to resonate with all these people. You know, yeah, you feel that you should be sensitive to their needs and pay attention to them, but you're not doing anything wrong if you focus your energy on what you've got to do right now. Does that make sense? So these people are here and they've friends, family, different people, you know, coworkers, everybody, right? All, all sorts of different people. Um, it's okay if you are withdrawing a little bit of your energy and being still within yourself in order to focus on what you need to do right now. Yeah, so I think 52 stilling, I think that's a really good message from spirit. And 21, biting through. Biting through is when you're trying to, you're chewing on something, trying to understand something, but it's different than um, the intellectual, because what I'm feeling here is more not really, not chewing on something mentally or intellectually in order to understand it. You think of chewing, right? What is chewing? Well, it's the beginning of the digestive process, right? Um, really, digestion begins with the eyes. You know, but it really physically makes that connection when we start chewing on some food, you know. Uh, so when I see biting through, I don't feel like this is necessarily us trying to figure something out. I feel like this is us trying to digest something, you know, kind of trying to accept it and, and maybe grasp it in such a way that it just kind of becomes a natural part of us. You know, it's trying, you know, they say, oh, that's a tough pill to swallow, right? And I think that's why we need to digest it. We need to be able to swallow this reality, um, accept the facts of the situation, accept the situation we're in, you know? So biting through, let's read it. Creating success, fruitful to use legal proceedings. Well, that might be a literal message for you, okay? But it might also be um, a message that basically says, you know, it is your right to act the way you're acting. You're well within, you know, the, the freight. You're well within your rights to do what you're doing. And I think it goes back to stilling too. Because you are focusing on your needs rather than what all of these other people are demanding or expecting from you. So it's fruitful to use legal proceedings. It, it's fruitful to stay within yourself and focus on your goals. Let's read the back. It's time to bite through to the truth of the situation and deal with any obstacles fiercely. It will help to use the determination of an investigator or a judge intent on restoring the world to good order who will let nothing stand between them and the truth. What must you do to get to the truth? How can you become more effective? Well, I don't, again, I don't think this is an intellectual issue. I think this is more um, about kind of accepting the reality, swallowing the pill, you know, the metaphorical pill, and acting, moving forward, getting that fierceness back and taking down these obstacles. So we've got the five of wands in the, the previous um, kind of energy. It feels like something has happened recently that kind of shook things up, that kind of disrupted your life a little bit. And it's easy to get angry at that. And, and maybe we had a, a moment where we were kind of um, just, we were almost 
judging our, our response or we were, let's say we were aware of how much, um, how much force we were using, right? Or how much anger we had about this. We were, we kind of noticed and we were able to be like, cool, calm it down a little bit, you know? Um, we were able to, to observe ourselves in that way and regulate our response. Our kind of, our more, not so much our response, our reaction to things, you know? Something happens and we just instantly react. Well, then we kind of catch ourselves, we take a breath, we calm it down, <sighs> okay swallow the pill, breathe, right? And then let's figure out what we're doing to move forward with this. Now we've got the two of pentacles. Now we see that, okay, I, I might have to adjust my actions. I might have to change the way that I am uh, dealing with the thing or the, the way that I am uh, acting in this situation. And, and just, I, I need to be able to adjust, course correct. And I feel like this is very much um, the reading that we had for you the other day. And I feel as if this is kind of um, a deeper dive into that, okay? Because we said there was a change in your life and we kind of had to go to a, an alternative plan, a contingency plan, but that doesn't mean you're not going to be successful. But this is how we're dealing with change. And this is, I think, first of all, Spirit saying, you got this. You got this. You're holding on to your vision. This is your, your Knight of Pentacles. This is the vision of the future, like I say, right? You can still see this thing materializing. Marty McFly still has that photograph. Everybody's still in it. Okay, we're good to go. Um, this is, um, you know, if you were looking, if you were considering the future and you were kind of extrapolating out, you know, months or years or whatever your timeline is, what if you, you couldn't see it materializing? Then maybe it, we'd worry a little bit more. But I think when you do that, when you do this uh, imagination exercise, you can still see everything there. Everything's still in place. You're getting there maybe by a different route, but it, it's still there, okay? So this is that long-term kind of, this is that spiritual vision of the, the long-term progress, okay? Now, with the uh, Prince of Cups, this is your authenticity. This is you really um, working to, to uh, ensure the manifestation of your dream. Okay, this is a lot of water energy in here, and there's this centeredness in there. This is, this is air of water, right? So within this emotion, within this passion, within this dedication, devotion, this sense of purpose and destiny, you've got a mind fixed on success, fixed on moving forward. You've got a mind that is calm, right? Center that is breathing and that is ready to make the next move, whatever it, whatever it needs to be. And that's how you're remaining in your authenticity. Okay. That's how you're ensuring that you're staying true to yourself and true to your vision, true to your dream. Okay. You're fixed in your dream with this card here. I like that very much. And then also with that dream, that dream is what is fueling your ambitions. If we didn't care about this, then it wouldn't bother me, right? If it didn't really matter one way or the other, then when life throws you a curveball, you say, man, whatever, I don't like the game anyway. You know, I don't play baseball, I don't care. Um, so you have a, a real uh, dedication and devotion to this project. I don't know if this is a work thing, if it's a, a family thing, a career, a creativity, it's all of these things probably, right? Um, and it's because of this commitment to the dream. It's really everything that's come before this is leading up to this water of fire queen of wands, right? And this is really you standing up and meeting the mountain face to face. Meeting the mountain face to face, right? In this kind of confidence because you have that fire behind you, right? And then we've got that air energy. The air goes into the water energy and the water goes into the fire energy. It all kind of fuels each other, right? And the fire kind of began all of this, but then it, then by stilling our mind, calming ourselves down, breathing, we're able to see our vision still. We're able to get back in those feelings and those feelings, that devotion, right? And dedication is now fueling the fire. So it kind of is a full circle. Yeah. And this, I think, is really the beginning of something great because we're going into all this fire energy with a real strength here in that nine of wands. Now, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do. Uh, it is totally free. It doesn't cost anything. 
and uh, it, it, been, it helps the channel. I, I really do appreciate that. YouTube's been very weird with the algorithm lately, and it feels that our numbers are really dipping down. Um, so it's now more than ever I, I ask for, for all of your help here to kind of keep the channel going and um, you know to communicate to YouTube that you enjoy watching the program, if you do, right? And one good way to do that is to subscribe and leave a comment. You know, that'd be great. And I would love to hear from you. So the Nine of Wands, this is our strength. And the strength comes from what we just talked about, from the connection to that purpose, that devotion, that dedication, that water energy, the moon at the bottom, and the fire energy, the sun at the top, right? It's the, it's the primal pair of opposites, you know, fire and water. Um, the, well, really the two of pentacles shows it perfectly because of the yin and the yang, right? So I think you have this strength and it really is this surge of confidence. Yeah. A real surge of confidence that, um, that you can deal with any anomalies, any variables, any roadblocks, obstacles, any surprises that come your way. You're not so worried about them. You know, you're, you're very good at dealing with those. And it's really, and to me, this is also stilling. If we think about stilling our body in meditation, what are we doing? We're keeping our, our spine in a, direct, um, in a direct line. You know, we're trying to keep everything um, uh, perfectly straight and aligned. And that's what it looks like here in this card, right? So it really is, um, I guess another way to say it, it really is having a backbone, right? Um, being very firm in our beliefs and in our convictions. And there's no... There's no um, weakness here, you know? There's really an ability to withstand difficulties. And yes, we get emotional. Yes, we get, uh, we kind of rage against things. We get angry. We have to kind of temper ourselves a little bit. Um, but those things aren't weakness. A display of emotion is not weakness. Again, if you didn't care, it wouldn't really bother you. But it bothers you because you care so much and because you have this conviction and this dedication to what you're doing. Yeah. So this is a very good card. And um, this is the foundation of the path of the serpent, which is where we see us really getting into this. Now we've got the air of fire, right? And we've got uh, obviously water of air up here. So we've got a lot of, uh, a lot of mixture of elements here. But I think with the, um, <clears throat> with the prince of wands here. This is really a card that just says, it's time for you to act. It's time for you to not respond in what might be, you know, an exaggerated way, not to respond with like frustration or anger or whatever these other emotions are, but to respond with purpose, with action, with conviction, you know, to do what needs to be done. It's time to act, not to react, right? And I think this is that, I mean, that's a wonderful card and it's in the position of your environment. Okay. So it's kind of, you know, when we look at the fire to earth connection here, these cards are very connected. This is the vision that you see within you. Well, st let's start taking steps to get there. The route might be different, but that's okay. Right. It's okay if the journey is a little bit different, but we, we still have that vision of where we're going with this vision. You see, and now of course the queen, of um, the Queen of Swords, it's in the position of what we don't want, okay? Or it's in the position of the obstacle. And I think the obstacle here is really the, the problem that we sometimes have trying to view ourselves objectively. This is the need for a lot of self-observation, right? This is water and air. And it's kind of like the mind trying to look at itself. It's the feelings trying to feel themselves. Um, this is a card that basically reminds us that the eye can't see itself except with a mirror. And it's the same thing like uh, we, we, can't, um, we can't bite our own teeth, you know. Um, we can't lick your own elbow, that sort of thing. And so we need some tools in, in the world. We need to have ourselves reflected in something else. And I think that's what this situation is. It's reflecting yourself back to you. And that takes us all the way back to the beginning in that five of wands where we kind of noticed our reaction and said, whoa, you know, I, I've got to, you know, I've got to regulate my, myself a little bit and channel all of this fire now into positive action, 
right? But that's the difficulty is to be able to see ourselves and to see how we are reacting to a situation, okay? So this card is all about finding clarity and it's kind of like using the mind to view the emotions, using the emotions to view the mind and realizing that it's not two separate things, right? They're, they're, they're the same energy. It's the heart mind, you know? It's just here in the West really that we separate that. And we say, well, my thinking is over here, my feeling is over here, and never the twain shall meet. But that's kind of impossible to do. Because when you're thinking things, you start to feel stuff. And when you're feeling stuff, you start to identify it and label it and think about it, talk about it. You put it into words that you can understand. And it's, we, we have to start thinking of it in that kind of way. Otherwise, we're going to feel like we've got two opposing teams here. And they're not sharing their strategy with each other. Right? But we're all on the same team. Our heart and our mind have to be allies. So let's, let's allow them to interact. You know, Let's, um, let's make a, an attempt to observe ourselves and to be introspective, but to also be very compassionate with ourselves. Let's accept what we... We're not judging ourselves and, and judging our reactions to things. We're not judging how we feel. We're not judging what we think. We're trying to understand. That's all so that we can reach a higher perspective like this card is showing. We're kind of in the clouds now. We've risen above some of the weather. You know, we're, uh, we're at an altitude now where we can see accurately ourselves down there in the storm and how we're reacting to things so that we can make adjustments. So that we can learn about ourselves, right? And the two of wands at the end is, is really the, the fundamental um, power that we have to control ourselves and to try in some way to direct the ship, to direct the course of nature, to steer the river a little bit, right? Because there are things that, that are within our power and things that are not within our power, okay? And that's what this card is telling us. Is this something that you can control? Is this something that you have any kind of influence over? Okay, well then you have to be aware of what that influence is. Okay. So we're not just kind of, um, we're not just hanging back and letting things happen. If we can have any sort of bearing on it, we're going to act in a positive way to steer that river in the right direction. Yeah. We've got a two of wands. Let's look at the mystery card though. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm very interested in this card today. I wonder if it'll be maybe the art or temperance card showing us the, the union of opposites, the, you know, the thinking and the feeling functions combined. But I don't know, I'm kind of feeling a major arcana. I'm kind of feeling empress, I'm kind of feeling wheel of fortune, I'm kind of feeling the universe or the world card. If you have a prediction though, I want you to put it down in the comments. Let's see. A two of swords. Mm, it's kind of an anticlimactic card, but, uh, but it's interesting here because it shows now um, a peace of mind, right? That we are, um, in some ways, we are, we're doing that work that we talked about with the feeling and the thinking, right? With the, with the queen of swords here. We're doing that work. We're figuring out how we're thinking, how we're feeling about stuff, and then, of course, how that's translating into action. And we're realizing now with the two of swords that um, there is something else that happens in that process. And it's kind of, it's hinted at in this card because this card we see it's kind of risen above, right? And now there's this kind of almost objective or transcendental view of things. And that's precisely what this card is, is advising us to do. We got the two of swords, someone that's blindfolded, has two swords, two different directions, not sure who to fight, not sure what side I even believe in, not sure what to do. Um, you know, we're using the mind to, to try to see itself, right? But above this card is that lunar crescent, right? And that reminds us that the, the true perception is a little bit higher than just the mind and the duality of the mind that we could get into this uh, psychic perception, this more objective view of reality, if you want to call it that, um, that goes beyond just the rational discourse, 
right? The, the, the discursive mind um, is always going to, it's a never ending process. We're talking about the thoughts and the feelings, right? Going round and round and round with the queen of swords. Well, that process will never end. You know, as long as we're alive, we're going to have a need to reflect on ourselves, to see our emotions, to see our thoughts, to feel ourselves, you know. But there is um, the idea then of rising above that machine, tapping into that psychic spiritual energy. Yeah, which incidentally is suggested in these cards here of, through meditation, through prayer, through devotion, through, you know, uh, dance and ritual and all these kinds of different things, right? There are many ways to, to connect with that psychic energy. And I think the <clears throat> part of the advice here is that we have to do that. That that is a, a crucial part of your path. Okay. So this card might be reminding us to, uh, in the midst of all of this elemental energy, we've got to rise above and we've got to connect with spirit. Okay. This work is very important, but so is connecting with spirit. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do an extended reading. The first extended reading in the new studio, just as you have, uh, coincidentally, the very first reading uh, in the new studio. So uh, I'm happy about that. I'm, uh, and I'm, I'm honored that you would share this moment with me. We are going to do the extended and there is a link up here. There's a link down below. Okay. Um, <clears throat> new readings for Sagittarius every Wednesday and Sunday, 6 a.m. Chicago time. That hasn't changed. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It is totally free. It does not cost you anything. Uh, leave a comment for me. Let me know where in the world you're watching from. I want you to know that you're the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you and I love you. And we're all in this together. What did I do with my cup? 